Good rainy Sunday morning everyone and welcome to the homestead. So really exciting fun filled day here today. We've got our Rosie. I've already got the cover off of it. So this is the cover. This would go on there. So you can see it's not terribly big. I mean this is the cover. This is an XW Pro. If that gives you some relation to size. You know you see I've got probably five or six inches up there and four inches over here and uh, off the wall the thing is about seven inches and the pro is about nine inches so it's considerably smaller i can't remember the exact weight on the pros but a hundred and something pounds this i think is probably around 45 pounds it is high frequency 6800 watts 120 240 split phase or 120 volt 60 hertz right out of the box i think it also does 230 50 hertz in software i haven't even got into that yet um I know I can convert it to 120 only in, in programming and by paralleling my L1 and L2, but we run split phase here, so we're not going to mess with that. What I wanted to do today, the engineers are really excited to see if it'll start my Ingersoll Rand air compressor, but before we blow it up, I wanted to try showing you some of the benefits of the high frequency and how it works versus like the low frequency um, and the transfer relays and stuff like that. So in a typical inverter like the XW or an Outback or a Magnum, the relay internally actually moves the loads back and forth. So the grid is over here, your generator is over here, the inverter is over here, your loads are in the middle. The relay actually moves the loads back and forth. So you'll notice like when the grid comes on, when it closes the relay, you'll see a flick in the lights. When it opens the relay, you'll see a bigger flick in the lights. That's because it's actually moving the uh, load. In a high frequency inverter, all the relay is doing is paralleling the grid. So the loads are always connected to the inverter always a straight line right connected to the inverter and when the relay closes it just parallels the grid in and out and because of the way it works it can just either take from the grid or put to the grid depending on what it's doing so right now we're running off grid you'll see we're running 240 volts the scope is actually hooked up you don't really have to focus on it much we're going to use that we want to capture some stuff when the when the compressor starts but these sine waves are l1 of the grid which is blue i think uh, no, sorry, blue is the output of the inverter, yellow is the grid. So it's both leg one, you'll see they're out of phase by quite a bit right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the grid on, and you guys are going to see the light, you'll probably hear the relay click, so I'm going to get quiet, and I'm going to turn the grid on, and you guys can kind of focus on the light and the scope and stuff and see what it does. So you'll notice you heard the click. You saw the blue sine wave slide over and match the yellow. So what the inverter does is it changes its frequency just a little bit to push the phase in line with the utility before it parallels that relay and closes it. So the relay always closes under zero load. You'll notice no flick in the light at all. So now, grid off. And you see no flicker in the light. There was a little bit of instability as the inverter got its frequency back under its feet so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to reach over here and shut these 12 volt lights off so it's going to get dark now the only light we have in here other than what's leaking around the door is from the inverter that light is being powered from the inverter right now so grid on So you saw no flicker in the light, grid off, and you just saw that little bit of dim in the lights as it tried to chase it down. So that's all going to be software definable, of course. You'll be able to, uh, you know, tell how far it chases that down before it disconnects. I think we have it set up for a generator right now. I'm not sure. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the battery charger. I'm going to have you guys probably come over here so you can see this meter instead. And you notice right now the house is drawing about 15 amps out of the battery. So we're going to connect the grid. And in a minute you'll hear the relay click. And this should go to about zero. So 
So there you see, and it's, it's kind of neutralizing it a little bit. It's powering itself from there, but you know, it'll hover around zero. So now I'm gonna turn the charger on. So up in here, I've got charger set off. And mostly while I'm doing this, I kind of want you guys to come right over here and kind of focus on the inverter to hear how quiet it is. So, I mean, you're probably hearing this scope more than you're hearing anything. So I'm gonna turn the uh, charger on. Okay, so you heard that little hum. We're running the charger pretty low. You'll see down here, we're running 21 amps. So let's go ahead and give it some power. So there's 80 amps going into the battery. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back down. I'll turn the charger off. So you know the the menu structure stuff still has a lot of work to do i mean obviously this is the this is the first alpha unit to leave the building it still has some 3d printing um but pretty cool i mean so far it's been seems real stable so what we're going to do is we're going to talk just a little bit about this for a minute and then we're going to do what everybody's been waiting for we're going to fire up that air compressor and see what happens so when we do the compressor we're going to go ahead and we're going to give you a starting from the grid so we're going to let you hear, we, we bled it down to 100 PSI. We started it from the grid with the camera and the mic setting in a very specific spot. And then we're going to go ahead and let it start from here with the camera and the mic in the exact same spot. So if it does start, which will be the first time it's ever started off inverters, if it does. If it does start, you'll hear, you know, we'll, we'll cut them in together so you can hear what it sounded like from the grid and what it sounded like from the inverter. And then we're going to have cameras out here to catch the light and the scope and everything as well because we're curious what it's going to do there. So in here, um, pretty straightforward. You get your terminal block for your AC. You get a ground lug in the back. There will be two ground lugs in the production unit. You have all your auxiliaries, your battery voltage sense, everything else over here. And then you have your CAN bus and your BTS jacks over here. So this is, of course, networked all together. You saw I'm playing with it on my Barcelona, which is actually running. I can see it over here, what it's doing. I can then go over here and look at my MPPT if I want. So everything is networked together. There's my Hawks Bay, you know, and I can go back to the status. Overall, it's a really crappy day out, so only making 900 watts. But that's kind of where we're at. Um, why don't we go ahead and see if we can't set you up, and we'll try running the air compressor. We've run other things already to test this. We've run the microwave, the well pump, the wash machine. I mean, this has been running three days now. This has been running about three days now, running whole house off grid. And we have a bank of uh, 360 amp hours to rely on. They are not full, by the way, because we ran all night. So that may not be a good test. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire the battery charger up. I'm gonna do some rewiring because the easiest way to run the air compressor is actually to go shut the main breaker off at the pole and back feed the utility down here from the inverter and that will start the air compressor because it's way in the garage there's no backup power anywhere near it i'd have to have probably 100 feet of wire to get out here so that's how we're going to do it so i'm going to turn the charger on and let this charge batteries for a while and get those back up closer to 100 percent to give everything a fair shake of starting that air compressor we'll get you guys set up and we'll be right back we're all set up what we've done here is inside here we've jumped the utility to the you know backup power so everything is fed from the rosy we've gone up to our electrical pole and we've pulled the uh, main breaker so we're back fitting all the way to the main breaker but it's off and we have sue on speakerphone she's in there with the uh, air compressor so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get everything ready here and basically sue's going to flip the breaker when i tell her to and we're going to see what happens and we're going to be ready to kill everything out here too if something goes horribly wrong. So go ahead Sue and flip the breaker. You want the breaker off? Yep. So as you guys can see, it did not work. Uh, the inverter went into some really weird oscillation and then actually shut down. 
All right, so Sue gave me the best explanation of what the air compressor sounded like when it tried to start. So I'm going to let her repeat that for you guys. <laughs> okay, so it did actually try to start. And when it starts, it kind of starts in two stages, it almost sounds like, um, to me, even when it's on the grid. So it started with its like, and then it went, and then it flashed the lights really hard a couple times, and then it was done. <laughs> So that's kind of it. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to give the camera to Sue. We're going to go ahead and pull our jumpers out and we're going to see if we actually killed the Rosie because as you guys saw, it went completely dead. It, um, it did not trip the breaker, but it went completely dead. All the lights were off on it. So Sue's going to grab you guys. I'm going to pull my scope and, and jumpers and everything out of here before I screw up and go turn the utility on. And it looks like I just won a nickel. I had a running bet with engineering and management that it would not start the, the compressor. I've tried it on a pair of pros. I've tried it on a quad stack of magnums. I've tried it on a dual stack of old trace SWs. That is a, um, that's a big air compressor. All right, so we're gonna go back live with the inverter. All right, it's a good sign. Lights came back on, power came back on. So there you have it. That's uh, that's kind of it. Like I said, I don't really think that's a fair shake, anyways. I don't think you should ask any six or seven thousand watt inverter to start that compressor. But they wanted me to try it. We tried it. We did not actually kill it. It's still running. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this set up to do more long-term running here. We're going to run more of the house off in it. We're going to put the grid back together. We're going to put all the covers on everything. Uh, we're having some issues with menu structures and settings with everything combined together. And to be fair, this is still a ways from the market and these are not. So I'm going to break that CAN bus chain and spend more time individually, if you will, to make sure I'm getting all the bugs worked out of these for you guys. So I think that's about it. I think we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap this video up. We'll get this posted and we'll bring you back in a couple days and, and do some more like menus and stuff with this thing and show you some of the stuff it can actually do i mean this is just kind of a, a quick you know here it is it's running look we're going to try to blow it up we didn't blow it up but it didn't start the compressor so thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe